In the standard model of particle physics, the Higgs mechanism is essential to explain the generation mechanism of the property mass for gauge bosons. Without the Higgs mechanism, all bosons, one of the two classes of particles, the other being fermions, would be considered massless, but measurements show that the W+, W-, and Z bosons actually have relatively large masses of around 80 GeV, C2. The Higgs field resolves this conundrum. The simplest description of the mechanism adds a quantum field, the Higgs field that permeates all space to the standard model. Below some extremely high temperature, the field causes spontaneous symmetry breaking during interactions. The breaking of symmetry triggers the Higgs mechanism, causing the bosons it interacts with to have mass. In the standard model, the phrase, Higgs mechanism, refers specifically to the generation of masses for the W plus or minus, and Z weak gauge bosons through electroweak symmetry breaking. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN announced results consistent with the Higgs particle on 14 March 2013, making it extremely likely that the field, or one like it, exists, and explaining how the Higgs mechanism takes place in nature. The mechanism was proposed in 1962 by Philip Warren Anderson, following work in the late 1950s on symmetry breaking in superconductivity and a 1960 paper by Yoichiro Nambu that discussed its application within particle physics. A theory able to finally explain mass generation without breaking. Gauge theory was published almost simultaneously by three independent groups in 1964, by Robert Brout and François Englert, by Peter Higgs, and by Gerald Goralnik, C. R. Hagen, and Tom Kibble. The Higgs mechanism is therefore also called the Brout Englert Higgs mechanism, or Englert Brout Higgs Goralnik Hagen Kibble mechanism, Anderson Higgs mechanism, Anderson Higgs Kibble mechanism, Higgs Kibble mechanism by Abdus Salam and Abahath mechanism for Anderson, Brout, Englert, Goralnik, Hagen, Higgs, Kibble, and T. Hooft by Peter Higgs, on the 8th of October 2013, following the discovery at CERN's Large Hadron Collider of a new particle that appeared to be the long-sought Higgs boson predicted by the theory, it was announced that Peter Higgs and François Englert had been awarded the 2013 Nobel Prize in Physics. Topic: Standard Model. The Higgs mechanism was incorporated into modern particle physics by Steven Weinberg and Abdus Salam, and is an essential part of the standard model. In the standard model, at temperatures high enough that electroweak symmetry is unbroken, all elementary particles are massless. At a critical temperature, the Higgs field becomes tachyonic, the symmetry is spontaneously broken by condensation, and the W and Z bosons acquire masses also called electroweak symmetry breaking, or EWSB. Fermions, such as the leptons and quarks in the standard model, can also acquire mass as a result of their interaction with the Higgs field, but not in the same way as the gauge bosons. <laughs> <laughs> Structure of the Higgs field 
In the standard model, the Higgs field is an SU doublet i.e. the standard representation with two complex components called isospin, which is a scalar under Lorentz transformations. Its electric charge is zero, its weak isospin is one half, its weak hypercharge the charge for the U gauge group is one. Under U rotations, it is multiplied by a phase, which thus mixes the real and imaginary parts of the complex spina into each other, combining to the standard two-component complex representation of the group U the Higgs field, through the interactions specified, summarized, represented, or even simulated by its potential, induces spontaneous breaking of three out of the four generators directions of the gauge group U. This is often written as SU times U which is strictly speaking only the same on the level of infinitesimal symmetries because the diagonal phase factor also acts on other fields, quarks in particular. Three out of its four components would ordinarily resolve as Goldstone bosons, if they were not coupled to gauge fields. However, after symmetry breaking, these three of the four degrees of freedom in the Higgs field mix with the three W and Z bosons W+, W- and Z, and are only observable as components of these weak bosons, which are made massive by their inclusion. Only the single remaining degree of freedom becomes a new scalar particle, the Higgs boson. Topic: The photon is the part that remains massless. The gauge group of the electroweak part of the standard model is SU two times U one. The group SU two is the group of all two by two unitary matrices with unit determinant. All the orthonormal changes of coordinates in a complex two-dimensional vector space. Rotating the coordinates so that the second basis vector points in the direction of the Higgs boson makes the vacuum expectation value of H the spinor zero v. The generators for rotations about the x, y, and z axes are by half the Pauli matrices sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, so that a rotation of angle theta about the z axis takes the vacuum to 0 v e minus 1 2 i theta display style left 0 v caret frac 1 2 i theta right while the tx and ti generators mix up the top and bottom components of the spina the tz rotations only multiply each by opposite phases this phase can be undone by a U rotation of angle 1 half theta. Consequently, under both an SU TZ rotation and a U rotation by an amount 1 half theta, the vacuum is invariant. This combination of generators Q equals T Z plus one two Y display style Q equals T underscore Z plus frac one two Y defines the unbroken part of the gauge group, where Q is the electric charge, Tz is the generator of rotations around the z-axis in the SU and Y is the hypercharge generator of the U 
This combination of generators a Z rotation in the SU and a simultaneous U rotation by half the angle preserves the vacuum, and defines the unbroken gauge group in the standard model, namely the electric charge group. The part of the gauge field in this direction stays massless, and amounts to the physical photon. Topic: Consequences for fermions. In spite of the introduction of spontaneous symmetry breaking, the mass terms preclude chiral gauge invariance. For these fields, the mass terms should always be replaced by a gauge invariant Higgs mechanism. One possibility is some kind of Yukawa coupling see below between the fermion field ψ and the Higgs field φ, with unknown couplings G ψ, which after symmetry breaking more precisely, after expansion of the Lagrange density around a suitable ground state again results in the original mass terms, which are now, however, i.e., by introduction of the Higgs field written in a gauge invariant way. The Lagrange density for the Yukawa interaction of a fermion field ψ and the Higgs field φ is L F E R M I O N phi A Psi equals Psi Gamma Mu D Mu Psi plus G Psi Psi Phi Psi Display style mathcal L underscore mathrum fermion phi A psi equals overline psi gamma carrot mu D underscore mu psi plus G underscore psi overline psi phi psi where again the gauge field A only enters D mu, i.e., it is only indirectly visible. The quantities G are the Dirac matrices, and G psi is the already mentioned Yukawa coupling parameter. Now the mass generation follows the same principle as above, namely from the existence of a finite expectation value phi wrangle. Again, this is crucial for the existence of the property mass. Topic: History of research. Topic: Background. Spontaneous symmetry breaking offered a framework to introduce bosons into relativistic quantum field theories. However, according to Goldstone's theorem, these bosons should be massless. The only observed particles which could be approximately interpreted as Goldstone bosons were the pions, which Yoichiro Nambu related to chiral symmetry breaking. A similar problem arises with Yang Mills theory, also known as non-abelian gauge theory, which predicts massless spin-1 gauge bosons. Massless weakly interacting gauge bosons lead to long-range forces, which are only observed for electromagnetism and the corresponding massless photon. Gauge theories of the weak force needed a way to describe massive gauge bosons in order to be consistent. Topic: 
Topic: Discovery. That breaking gauge symmetries did not lead to massless particles was observed in 1961 by Julian Schwinger, but he did not demonstrate massive particles would eventuate. This was done in Philip Warren Anderson's 1962 paper but only in non-relativistic field theory, it also discussed consequences for particle physics but did not work out an explicit relativistic model. The relativistic model was developed in 1964 by three independent groups Robert Brout and François Englert Peter Higgs Gerald Goralnik, Carl Richard Hagen, and Tom Kibble, slightly later, in 1965, but independently from the other publications the mechanism was also proposed by Alexander Migdal and Alexander Polyakov, at that time Soviet undergraduate students. However, their paper was delayed by the editorial office of JETP, and was published late, in 1966. The mechanism is closely analogous to phenomena previously discovered by Yoichiro Nambu involving the «vacuum structure» of quantum fields in superconductivity. A similar but distinct effect involving an affine realization of what is now recognized as the Higgs field, known as the Stueckelberg mechanism, had previously been studied by Ernst Stueckelberg. These physicists discovered that when a gauge theory is combined with an additional field that spontaneously breaks the symmetry group, the gauge bosons can consistently acquire a non-zero mass. In spite of the large values involved see below, this permits a gauge theory description of the weak force, which was independently developed by Steven Weinberg and Abdus Salam in 1967. Higgs's original article presenting the model was rejected by physics letters. When revising the article before resubmitting it to Physical Review Letters, he added a sentence at the end, mentioning that it implies the existence of one or more new, massive scalar bosons, which do not form complete representations of the symmetry group, these are the Higgs bosons. The three papers by Brout and Englert, Higgs, and Goralnik, Hagen, and Kibble were each recognized as milestone letters by Physical Review Letters in 2008. While each of these seminal papers took similar approaches, the contributions and differences among the 1964 PRL symmetry breaking papers are noteworthy. All six physicists were jointly awarded the 2010 J.J. Sakurai Prize for Theoretical Particle Physics for this work. Benjamin W. Lee is often credited with first naming the Higgs like mechanism, although there is debate around when this first occurred. One of the first times the Higgs name appeared in print was in 1972 when Gerard S. T. Hooft and Martinus J. G. Veltman referred to it as the Higgs-Kibble mechanism in their Nobel-winning paper. Examples <laughs> 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 The Higgs mechanism occurs whenever a charged field has a vacuum expectation value. In the nonrelativistic context, this is the Landau model of a charged Bose-Einstein condensate, also known as a superconductor. In the relativistic condensate, the condensate is a scalar field, and is relativistically invariant. Topic. Landau model 
The Higgs mechanism is a type of superconductivity which occurs in the vacuum. It occurs when all of space is filled with a sea of particles which are charged, or, in field language, when a charged field has a non-zero vacuum expectation value. Interaction with the quantum fluid filling the space prevents certain forces from propagating over long distances as it does in a superconducting medium, e.g., in the Ginzburg-Landau theory. A superconductor expels all magnetic fields from its interior, a phenomenon known as the Meissner effect. This was mysterious for a long time, because it implies that electromagnetic forces somehow become short-range inside the superconductor. Contrast this with the behavior of an ordinary metal. In a metal, the conductivity shields electric fields by rearranging charges on the surface until the total field cancels in the interior. But magnetic fields can penetrate to any distance, and if a magnetic monopole an isolated magnetic pole is surrounded by a metal the field can escape without collimating into a string. In a superconductor, however, electric charges move with no dissipation, and this allows for permanent surface currents, not just surface charges. When magnetic fields are introduced at the boundary of a superconductor, they produce surface currents which exactly neutralize them. The Meissner effect is due to currents in a thin surface layer, whose thickness, the London penetration depth, can be calculated from a simple model. The Ginzburg-Landau theory this simple model treats superconductivity as a charged Bose-Einstein condensate. Suppose that a superconductor contains bosons with charge Q. The wave function of the bosons can be described by introducing a quantum field, ψ, which obeys the Schrödinger equation as a field equation in units where the reduced Planck constant, h, is set to 1. I T psi equals minus I Q A two two M psi Display style i partial over partial t psi equals nabla i q a carrot two over two meters psi. The operator psi x annihilates a boson at the point x, while its adjoint psi creates a new boson at the same point. The wave function of the Bose-Einstein condensate is then the expectation value ψ of ψ x, which is a classical function that obeys the same equation. The interpretation of the expectation value is that it is the phase that one should give to a newly created boson so that it will coherently superpose with all the other bosons already in the condensate. When there is a charged condensate, the electromagnetic interactions are screened. To see this, consider the effect of a gauge transformation on the field. A gauge transformation rotates the phase of the condensate by an amount which changes from point to point, and shifts the vector potential by a gradient, psi eiq phi x psi a plus phi, display style begin aligned psi and right arrow e caret iq phi x psi and right arrow a plus nabla phi end aligned when there is no condensate, this transformation only changes the definition of the phase of psi at every point. But when there is a condensate, the phase of the condensate defines a preferred choice of phase. 
The condensate wave function can be written as psi x equals rho x e i theta x display style psi x equals rho x e caret i theta x, where rho is real amplitude, which determines the local density of the condensate. If the condensate were neutral, the flow would be along the gradients of theta, the direction in which the phase of the Schrödinger field changes. If the phase theta changes slowly, the flow is slow and has very little energy. But now theta can be made equal to zero just by making a gauge transformation to rotate the phase of the field. The energy of slow changes of phase can be calculated from the Schrödinger kinetic energy H equals 1 2 m q a plus psi 2 Display style h equals one over two meters left q a plus nabla psi right carrot two, and taking the density of the condensate rho to be constant, h approximately equals rho two two m Q A plus theta two display style h approximately rho carrot two over two meters Q A plus nabla theta carrot two fixing the choice of gauge so that the condensate has the same phase everywhere the electromagnetic field energy has an extra term q 2 rho 2 2 m a 2 Display style q carrot two row carrot two over two meters a carrot two. When this term is present, electromagnetic interactions become short range. Every field mode, no matter how long the wavelength, oscillates with a non-zero frequency. The lowest frequency can be read off from the energy of a long wavelength A mode E approximately equals a 2 2 plus Q 2 rho 2 2 M A two Display style E approximately dot a carrot two over two plus Q carrot two row carrot two over two meters a carrot two This is a harmonic oscillator with frequency one M Q Two row two display style sqrt frac one m q caret two row caret two. The quantity psi two equals row two is the density of the condensate of superconducting particles. In an actual superconductor, the charged particles are electrons, which are fermions not bosons. So in order to have superconductivity, the electrons need to somehow bind into Cooper pairs. The charge of the condensate Q is therefore twice the electron charge minus E. 
The pairing in a normal superconductor is due to lattice vibrations, and is in fact very weak, this means that the pairs are very loosely bound. The description of a Bose-Einstein condensate of loosely bound pairs is actually more difficult than the description of a condensate of elementary particles, and was only worked out in 1957 by Bardeen, Cooper and Schrieffer in the famous BCS theory. <laughs> Abelian Higgs mechanism. Gauge invariance means that certain transformations of the gauge field do not change the energy at all. If an arbitrary gradient is added to A, the energy of the field is exactly the same. This makes it difficult to add a mass term, because a mass term tends to push the field toward the value zero. But the zero value of the vector potential is not a gauge invariant idea. What is zero in one gauge is non-zero in another. So in order to give mass to a gauge theory, the gauge invariance must be broken by a condensate. The condensate will then define a preferred phase, and the phase of the condensate will define the zero value of the field in a gauge invariant way. The gauge invariant definition is that a gauge field is zero when the phase change along any path from parallel transport is equal to the phase difference in the condensate wavefunction. The condensate value is described by a quantum field with an expectation value, just as in the Ginzburg-Landau model. In order for the phase of the vacuum to define a gauge, the field must have a phase also referred to as to be charged. In order for a scalar field phi to have a phase, it must be complex, or, equivalently, it should contain two fields with a symmetry which rotates them into each other. The vector potential changes the phase of the quanta produced by the field when they move from point to point. In terms of fields, it defines how much to rotate the real and imaginary parts of the fields into each other when comparing field values at nearby points. The only renormalizable model where a complex scalar field phi acquires a non-zero value is the Mexican hat model, where the field energy has a minimum away from zero. The action for this model is S phi equals one two phi two minus lambda phi two minus phi Two two display style s phi equals int frac one two left partial phi right carrot two lambda left left phi right carrot two phi carrot two right carrot two which results in the Hamiltonian H phi equals 1 2 phi 2 plus phi 2 plus v phi Display style H phi equals frac one two left dot phi right carrot two plus left nabla phi right carrot two plus V left phi right. The first term is the kinetic energy of the field. 
The second term is the extra potential energy when the field varies from point to point. The third term is the potential energy when the field has any given magnitude. This potential energy, the Higgs potential, V, Z, phi. Topic Lambda Z two minus phi two two has a graph which looks like a Mexican hat, which gives the model its name. In particular, the minimum energy value is not at Z. Zero, but on the circle of points where the magnitude of Z is phi. When the field phi x is not coupled to electromagnetism, the Mexican hat potential has flat directions. Starting in any one of the circle of vacua and changing the phase of the field from point to point costs very little energy. Mathematically, if phi x equals phi e i theta x display style phi x equals phi e caret i theta x with a constant prefactor then the action for the field theta x ie the phase of the Higgs field phi x, has only derivative terms. This is not a surprise. Adding a constant to theta x is a symmetry of the original theory, so different values of theta x cannot have different energies. This is an example of Goldstone's theorem. Spontaneously broken continuous symmetries normally produce massless excitations. The abelian Higgs model is the Mexican hat model coupled to electromagnetism. S phi a equals minus one four F new new F new new plus minus I Q A Phi two Minus Lambda Phi two minus Phi two two Display style S Phi A equals int frac one four F carrot mu new F underscore mu new plus left left partial IQA right Phi right carrot two lambda left left Phi right carrot two Phi carrot two right carrot two the classical vacuum is again at the minimum of the potential, where the magnitude of the complex field phi is equal to phi, but now the phase of the field is arbitrary, because gauge transformations change it. This means that the field theta x can be set to zero by a gauge transformation, and does not represent any actual degrees of freedom at all. Furthermore, choosing a gauge where the phase of the vacuum is fixed, the potential energy for fluctuations of the vector field is non-zero. So in the abelian Higgs model, the gauge field acquires a mass. To calculate the magnitude of the mass, consider a constant value of the vector potential A in the x direction in the gauge where the condensate has constant phase. 
This is the same as a sinusoidally varying condensate in the gauge where the vector potential is zero. In the gauge where A is zero, the potential energy density in the condensate is the scalar gradient energy E equals 1 2 phi E I Q A X two equals one two Q two Phi two a two Display style E equals frac one two left partial left phi E carrot I Q A X right right carrot two equals frac one two Q carrot two phi carrot two a carrot two This energy is the same as a mass term half a square meter A two where M equals Q phi equals topic non abelian higgs mechanism equals the non abelian higgs model has the following action s phi a equals 1 4 G 2 TR F mu mu F mu mu plus D Phi 2 plus V Phi Display style S Phi Math BF equals int one over four grams carrot two math op text RM TR F carrot mu new F underscore mu new plus D Phi carrot two plus V Phi where now the non-abelian field A is contained in the covariant derivative D and in the tensor components F mu nu display style F caret mu nu and F mu nu Display style f underscore mu nu. The relation between a and those components is well known from the Yang-Mills theory. It is exactly analogous to the abelian Higgs model. Now the field phi is in a representation of the gauge group, and the gauge covariant derivative is defined by the rate of change of the field minus the rate of change from parallel transport using the gauge field A as a connection. D phi equals phi minus I A K T K Phi Display style D Phi equals partial Phi Iowa carrot K T underscore K Phi Again, the expectation value of phi defines a preferred gauge where the vacuum is constant, and fixing this gauge, fluctuations in the gauge field A come with a non-zero energy cost. Depending on the representation of the scalar field, not every gauge field acquires a mass. 
A simple example is in the renormalizable version of an early electroweak model due to Julian Schwinger. In this model, the gauge group is so 3 or su 2 minus there are no spinor representations in the model, and the gauge invariance is broken down to u 1 or so 2 at long distances. To make a consistent renormalizable version using the Higgs mechanism, introduce a scalar field phi which transforms as a vector a triplet of so 3. If this field has a vacuum expectation value, it points in some direction in field space. Without loss of generality, one can choose the z-axis in field space to be the direction that phi is pointing, and then the vacuum expectation value of phi is 0, 0, a, where a is a constant with dimensions of mass c equals equals 1 Display style C equals HBAR equals one. Rotations around the z-axis form a U one subgroup of so three, which preserves the vacuum expectation value of phi, and this is the unbroken gauge group. Rotations around the x and y axis do not preserve the vacuum, and the components of the SO gauge field which generate these rotations become massive vector mesons. There are two massive W mesons in the Schwinger model, with a mass set by the mass scale A, and one massless U gauge boson, similar to the photon. The Schwinger model predicts magnetic monopoles at the electroweak unification scale, and does not predict the Z meson. It doesn't break electroweak symmetry properly as in nature. But historically, a model similar to this but not using the Higgs mechanism was the first in which the weak force and the electromagnetic force were unified. Topic affine Higgs mechanism Ernst Stueckelberg discovered a version of the Higgs mechanism by analyzing the theory of quantum electrodynamics with a massive photon. Effectively, Stueckelberg's model is a limit of the regular Mexican hat abelian Higgs model, where the vacuum expectation value H goes to infinity and the charge of the Higgs field goes to zero in such a way that their product stays fixed. The mass of the Higgs boson is proportional to H, so the Higgs boson becomes infinitely massive and decouples, so is not present in the discussion. The vector meson mass, however, equals to the product A, and stays finite. The interpretation is that when a U gauge field does not require quantized charges, it is possible to keep only the angular part of the Higgs oscillations, and discard the radial part. The angular part of the Higgs field θ has the following gauge transformation law, θ θ plus e alpha a a plus alpha, display style begin aligned θ and right arrow θ plus e alpha, a and right arrow a plus partial alpha, end aligned the gauge covariant derivative for the angle which is actually gauge invariant is d θ equals θ Minus e a h display style d theta equals partial theta e a h. In order to keep theta fluctuations finite and non-zero in this limit, theta should be rescaled by h so that its kinetic term in the action stays normalized. The action for the theta field is read off from the Mexican hat action by substituting phi equals h e i theta h display style phi equals he caret i theta h s equals one four 
f two plus one two d theta two equals one four f two plus one two theta minus H E A two equals one four F two plus one two theta minus M A two Display style S equals int TFRAC one four F carrot two plus TFRAC one two D theta carrot two equals int TFRAC one four F carrot two plus TFRAC one two partial theta hay carrot two equals int TFRAC one four F carrot two plus TFRAC one two partial theta ma carrot two since A is the gauge boson mass. By making a gauge transformation to set theta equals zero, the gauge freedom in the action is eliminated, and the action becomes that of a massive vector field S equals one four F two plus one two M two a two Display style S equals int TFRAC one four F carrot two plus TFRAC one two M carrot two a carrot two to have arbitrarily small charges requires that the U one is not the circle of unit complex numbers under multiplication, but the real numbers are under addition, which is only different in the global topology. Such a U one group is non-compact. The field theta transforms as an affine representation of the gauge group. Among the allowed gauge groups, only non-compact U admits affine representations, and the U of electromagnetism is experimentally known to be compact, since charge quantization holds to extremely high accuracy. The Higgs condensate in this model has infinitesimal charge, so interactions with the Higgs boson do not violate charge conservation. The theory of quantum electrodynamics with a massive photon is still a renormalizable theory, one in which electric charge is still conserved, but magnetic monopoles are not allowed. For non-abelian gauge theory, there is no affine limit, and the Higgs oscillations cannot be too much more massive than the vectors. See also Electroweak interaction Electromagnetic mass Higgs bundle Mass generation Quantum triviality Yang-Mills Higgs equations Notes <laughs>